What's up everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to a very special episode of Client Content. So before we get into it, I really want to say a big thank you to everyone who's been supporting this channel so far. Um, I started this channel a couple of weeks ago and um, I'm very happy to see that the last uh, steel frame upcycling build video has hit uh, over 43,000 views already, a bunch of uh, very, very supportive uh, and useful comments as well. So yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, as I've seen that you seem to be very interested in steel bikes and steel frames, and there seems to be a lot of love out there uh, for these kind of bikes, I wanted to make a very special episode today and talk about the favorite bike that I have, um, which gives me most pleasure while riding it. And it actually is a steel frame as well. So just to give you a little bit of background, um, at the moment uh, here in, uh, in my place in Berlin, I'm having three bikes on hand, four bikes on hand. Um, one is this one, which is the very first client concept. Uh, we're gonna talk about that one in a second. It's an ultra lightweight steel frame, I would say. Um, then there is the client concept that I've just built in the previous video. Then there is the standard fart finder, which is also a steel frame, um, kind of road slash gravel frame. And there is the Yoleo R12, which is um, a carbon frame, which was my favorite frame and my favorite bike last year, which I also took on a cycling vacation in Mallorca. Really, really loved it. Just had to take it apart uh, for some components that I needed during the winter season. Um, but that rebuild is going to come up back soon as well. And then you've seen uh, me riding the BMC uh, recently because I was just visiting my parents over the past weeks and that's where I have my BMC, also a carbon frame. I gotta say it's maybe the least favorite bike of mine. But anyways, it's not about that. Um, but just wanted to give you a little bit of context in regards to how special this bike is for me. So as I said, this is now my most favorite bike, which gives me the most motivation of getting out there and actually riding it. Um, I bought this bike secondhand, and when I bought it, it looked like this. Um, in the end, it turned out it was a Dacordi Profidea, I think from the years around 2000. Um, had a bunch of issues with it in the beginning when uh, disassembling parts um, from the frame because a lot of it was seized. The biggest problem was the seat post that was seized in uh, the seat tube. But uh, yeah, after a couple of uh, couple of hours of twisting and turning it, um, we managed to pull this one out. Um, in the beginning, it felt rather heavy, um, but it turned out that it was due to the wheels and due to the group set. Also, the fork that it came with was uh, more on the heavy side. It wasn't the original Dacordi. It was still a carbon fork, but it was rather on the heavy side. But uh, yes, when I just had the naked frame in my hands, I really felt that it was very, very light. So I thought, okay, let's give it a try and see how light we can get this bike as uh, having a steel frame as the fundament and the basis of it. So I'm very happy to say that this frame ends up being uh, around seven kilos pretty much on the spot, if I remember it correctly, but we're gonna weigh it together at the end of the video. Um, we're gonna put it on the scale and just sanity check whatever I'm just saying right now. Um, so yeah, what, what happened to this frame basically? Um, the color has been stripped, uh, it has been repainted in black. In the meantime, a bunch of corrosion has been removed um, and it has been um, protected with some rust and corrosion protection also as well from the insi inside. Same guys have been painting that bike um, as the ones that did the disco frame. They're called Bike Brothers Berlin or Berlin Bike Brothers doing an amazing job in regards to painting bikes. And um, yeah, so what have I done? I basically got rid of the original fork, which wasn't the Cordy fork in the beginning. It was a little bit on the heavy side. Um, I got a new Columbus um, one inch fork for the front because it is a, a one inch headset. I knew that I wanted this bike to be black, but I also didn't want it to be like super stealth. I wanted to have like one accent color. Um, and I'm a big fan of uh, the Chris King components and the Chris King wheels. I can't really afford them, but I was able to afford a headset. And um, yeah, I really, really liked that so-called mango color, which is basically why for this I bought the Chris King um, threadless or no threads one inch headset and basically put that in here in this mango color and that kind of defined the overall accent color for the rest of the bike as well. So overall to keep it lightweight let me move over to the side. I decided to go for I think what is the last mechanical Dura-Ace group before they went all electronic 
which is the Jura Ace 9100. I went for a compact crank set. Um, and I gotta say, after riding it, I'm kind of torn between do I still prefer a Jura Ace Di2 electric and shifting or do I actually prefer this one? Because the travel on the levers, it's so short, it feels almost as efficient as switching uh, electrically and you don't have the hassle of relying on having a charged battery and things like this. It feels very easy to tune in case something happens. It feels like I'm able to um, fix it right on the spot while with electrical shifting. That might not always be the case. So what else did I do to uh, keep it light? There is a Chinese um, wheel manufacturer called Elite Wheels who's been, I think, the company where I bought my first carbon wheels from on my very first carbon bike, which I got off AliExpress and that's a whole different story. Um, in the end, it ended up getting me into cycling because it was fairly cheap. But yeah, there was a brand called Elite Wheels, which have been doing like rather budget uh, carbon deep section wheels. Back then, they felt quite all right. I didn't really know what I'm going for. I was only caring for the looks, to be honest, which I still do a little bit. But they recently introduced a more premium line of wheels, which they call Drive. These are basically from that Drive series. Uh, these are 50 millimeter deep section carbon wheels and basically together they weigh 1,400 grams, I think plus minus, maybe more, plus 50 grams. Um, so let's call it 1,450 grams for the set, which I think is great um, for a 50 millimeter deep rim. On those wheels, I got Continental GP5000 set up tubeless with some Silka tubeless sealant, which from the test that I've seen, seem to be one of the better ones. Um, at least so far, I didn't really have any issues with punctures. On those wheels, I also upgraded the regular quick release skewers with uh, titanium ones, um, just trying to get every, every gram uh, and save every gram in there. So on the hub, on the rear wheel, we have uh, a Jura Ace 1125 cassette, also to keep it very light, bought second hand because I mean, the new prices for such a cassette are just ridiculous. And I found one on uh, also our local eBay, which was barely used for pretty much half the price. And to close the topic on the wheels, I also added some Mango Chris King tubeless valves.